So it's only been two years since you were knocking on doors. 16, you're 18 now. So from zero to $100,000 a month, what's the one thing that took you? My name is Aiden Bowles. I'm 18. I do a lot with e-commerce. I run an ad agency, and now we also run a training program. How would a person who knows nothing whatsoever, how would they, come, how would they make, how would you teach them how to make money with this? My first recommendation to you would be start with something for free to identify what you want to do to make sure it is the right thing for you, but also who you want to learn from. So that could mean watching my YouTube videos, watching a lot of other people's. Like you know, I have over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Hundreds of videos you can go look at. And there's a lot of other people who do as well. So identify, first of all, who you resonate with the most because this is something that I call mass mixing. You try to learn you know, e-commerce from this person, from this person, and this person. You're getting three different strategies. And if you try to mix that into one, it's not gonna turn out so well for you. So I always recommend sticking with one person who you know is legit, which is very important. Sticking with that, getting results, and then you can start branching out and testing other things. Also look at the facts on paper. Make sure they're making money. Look at the facts on well, how, a lot of people how, like to talk about that. How can you confirm that though? There's a lot of things. First of all, social status. I believe it's very hard to build a long term and big brand personally if you're fake. People have done it, I'm sure people have, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are still gonna be smaller. So that's why the bigger you go in size, you know, even if you want to like throw Ty Lopez in there, there's no way they're a scam. They would have been mm -hmm. they're not gonna be there anymore. We'll just back up a little bit. Now, Jason and yourself used to do the door knocking. Yeah, yeah, that's how we met. We used to go door to door residential and, and mm -hmm. sell solar, sell people something they didn't really want. Yeah, so then we really connected an entrepreneur event that one of my buddies threw, and you know, we had mutual friends at the time, and so just started connecting and what, hanging out in LA, and then mm -hmm. we progressed, so. So did the door knocking teach you anything? Did <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sales, understanding that you know people can and will turn you down, whether it's hanging up the phone, slamming it in your face, people threatening to pull a gun on you, calling the cops on you. Good. I'm gonna run you over with my dirt bike, all that shit. Jeez. So for me, that was like I was 16 at the time. I was like just a little kid from Minnesota. Like, right. I was an introvert, so that even actually knocking on the door for me was like the biggest step. Really? Like I remember that first door. I think like the biggest anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just getting past it, understanding it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get that first deal, the second right. deal, you know, people are nice to you, and it's like you're just searching for more and more. So, taught me a lot about just, I guess, business and life. You know, I was selling on the phone at the time for someone's sales program and doing door-to-door -door sales. So. Jeez. Was, what kind of money you make doing that at that uh, time? Nothing. But you didn't make at least five or ten k a month. No, not even close. Four, zero. I never, I never got paid from door. But yeah. I didn't care. Okay. You know, like I was making a little bit of money on the phone and some stuff, and at the time, the knowledge is getting that's way when more I was, valuable. You know, I was meeting all these people. For me, it was cool. I was traveling, mm -hmm. and I was making about a thousand dollars a month with affiliate marketing at okay. the time. So that's when I was first getting into it. And then I started making a couple thousand. So how did you go? What do you think is the thing that took you from? here to there because you know it's only been two years since you were knocking on doors 16 to 18 now 100 so from zero to a hundred thousand dollars a month what's the one thing that took you getting good at one level? thing getting good at one thing so I, I realized I was getting good at like a lot of different skills I was trying to you know learn funnels learn you know Facebook ads but you gotta understand like a business model I'm not the best at everything with e-commerce but I'm I understand the whole process and I'm good at a couple of specific things. Okay. You know, so I was able to identify that, put it together and just focus on that. And I literally let my only income affiliate marketing stop growing. It was residual, so it slowly started going down. Mm -hmm. And because I bet so much on e-commerce, I was like, this is gonna work. I used the money from that, all of it. I kept going broke. I was waiting for the next check. Hmm. And so I just bet on it. And I let that be the one thing. I'm like, I'm gonna learn this. And a lot of people get discouraged from certain things, but I was like, if there's other people making money, I can make money no matter what, because it just means I'm doing something wrong from now. Like the way we built this business was, was focused, right? Sales, I had all sales, you know, operations. Um, we did have to wear a few hats here and there, but at some point we realized we couldn't do that. And, but as we got bigger and bigger, we brought on more and more people who could spe specify or focus on a particular area, right? That's how we have the underwriter, he does the underwriting stuff, or she does the underwriting stuff, the risk, this, you know, this person, that person, telemarketing department, this department, that department. 
But believe it or not, as the company grew, I started to try to do different things. And my focus became like super scattered, like super scattered to the point where I had to like come back to ground zero and say, hold on, what's the thing that helped grow the company well? And that was basically like what you said, just focusing on one thing, right? And then building a team around you of people who can do all these other different things. So let's say we have 50 people show up tomorrow that want to become sales consultants here. And if there isn't a system in place to funnel them through, it'll just be me one-on-one and be trying to show them this and that and everyone would be all over the damn place. But if there's a system in place, right, they can come through and roll right through, right, which is how we kind of build our program here, right? There's going to be some one-on-one here and there, but to build a system, man, that's how you, that's how you really grow your business. Amazon has a system. Apple has a system. You know, any, any company that has any kind of size or success, they all have systems in place. Because, yeah, you said everyone thinks they're the entrepreneur, but in the actuality, it don't matter the CEO or whatever, they're still the manager because here's still people come with them with problems. Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to have that system where those other people, their manager is supposed to deal with that so you yeah. can be the entrepreneur. And, uh, yeah, I'll never forget that. Man, dude, so having a system is, like, key. The way that I view my financial resources now is unlocking the potential to do something else. So for me, e-commerce was never the goal. It was uh-huh. never, you know, it's just a vehicle to get to something else. I want to get into real estate, oh. passive income, multi, you know, multifamily, into real okay. estate. So for me, I can't do that with no money. Right. No money, no credit. This is so just a vehicle to get Exactly, it's a vehicle. Uh-huh. So I view it's it. And, and now... It's going to give me the vehicle to be at the financial point that like, I can then do that. And I'm not saying I won't keep doing e-commerce, but along the way, I met a lot of people, you know, started other companies you know, because of its softwares. And it's really like diversified everything. My income's pretty well spread out. Right. And you know, now even real estate, that for me is you know, probably not going to happen for like at least two years or something. Yeah. People have different thresholds. Like I know people, their, their goal is just, I want to make 10000 a month so I can live my life and just do their thing. And people have different aspirations of what they want to do. I just love real estate. I'm on Zillow every day either way. Yeah. I just love looking at that. You like it like that? Oh, 100%. But for right now, <laughs> dominating the e-commerce end of it, helping as many people as possible along the way, and building one of the best ad agencies that exist. Because everyone else is just not doing it correctly. Okay. That's simply my view. So Why do you say they're not doing it? I mean, you can tell us why. You- Speed, the clientele, they don't have the right resources. They're not building the right systems. I'm all about systems. Like right now, it's just, every day is just the, the correct thing because I don't care. I, I'll work longer than people. I'll work 18 hours a day. It doesn't bother me. So like I sleep very minimal, but it's not like I'm just going to do that forever. I know that what I'm building every single day is going to then allow me to have the right system on the back end in place in a year, five years, 10, whatever it may be. Mm. So, you know, and now with my brand and the people I can, you know, meet and do stuff with, I just understand at least from an ad agency perspective, the clientele I can get, the results I can get, the biggest differentiating factors, I will never close a client that I know I can't handle and do it right now. Mm. Most people don't do that. They mm. just want the money. Mm. But what's what's one month of payment and no payment ever and a bad relationship? Mm. True. I don't True. care. Like I make money at other places. You know, My monthly expenses are this compared to what I make. Just, uh, just, I mean, we're not working for something temporary. Yeah, it's no, like... Okay. Uh, Man. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just a kid. Right, right, just doing right, my thing. Right. I'm just out here doing backflips and skateboarding. I'm trying to, right, trying to right, figure it out. Right, right. That's cool. <laughs> you said something. You said to basically get good at one thing. That could be tough because there's so many shiny objects out here, man. Oh, yeah. You know, you got uh, people kind of doing the same thing but seeing it in a different way. You know, and you can get caught up. Like you said, you can have five mentors telling you five different things. On the same thing, yeah. On the same (laughs) thing. Because everybody's, you know, a mentor these days. You do have to be careful. And I I try and differentiate myself from what I do, but people kind of put you in the same pool, and that's fine. But Mm -hmm. that's what's called shiny ball syndrome. They're getting into real estate. The next day, social media marketing is the gas. That's where all the money is. Go there. The next day, they're trying to do drop shipping. Mm -hmm. You'll get experience a little bit, but you can never actually really create results without just your full attention. Like, you know, I, people see me as young, but mm-hmm. every single day since I was 12, I've been mastering a craft. You know, every day from 12 to 15, I was trading stocks, eight hours a day. I mm-hmm. learned how to do that. I was managing my dad's retirement account by the time I was 13. Okay. Like, that's oh, wow. because of how much work I had put in. I was good. Wow. And so then I lost interest. Okay. I didn't care for it at all. So I switched into learning how to grow social media accounts. That quickly led me into affiliate marketing, e-commerce. And so I've been doing something every day for years and years and years and wow. years. Wow. And so just the e-commerce end of thing has been almost three years, right. understanding what I do. So do you still do the social media stuff too? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's transitioned into my personal brand. Mm-hmm. I used to grow influencer pages, like big meme pages, mm-hmm. viral videos, 
because I wasn't comfortable putting myself out there at the time as an introvert. Mm-hmm. And so that's just a skill I learned, you know, I was behind the scenes, you know, for a kid, you're just making some money and learning. Uh, what's one of the takeaways, man, that you can say you guys picked up from traveling? From traveling, experiences are amazing. I definitely worked a little bit too much while I was there, so I missed out on certain things, yeah. but it's tough to regret it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'll give you a piece of like travel plus life advice. Be careful. That's just my saying. I'm gonna put that on my wall and a big neon sign. Just be careful. Okay. Everyone you meet when you're driving, be careful out there. There's crazy people. When you're traveling, be careful. We had a lot of run-ins with bad people. A lot of run-ins with the police calling the embassy to get us out of countries, like bad things. Mm. So just be careful. Wow. You know? now, for whatever reason, everyone in America, a lot of people feel entitled, but everyone here feels entitled for whatever reason. You go out of the country, it definitely will humble you in a different way. Yeah, man. No matter what country you go to, you'll see people live in a different way. And some people live their whole lives without going out the country, and they never know mm-hmm. any of that stuff is actually real or going on and until they see it. Like, wow, I'm actually complaining about, you know, just being depressed or something. There's someone that has to walk two miles every day to get a duck, like dirty water to drink, and you yeah, know they yeah. don't have a roof over their head. Like people, yeah. homeless people here, they at least got buildings and stuff they can go. And out there, you're out in the desert, you're out in the yeah. jungle. You know what I'm saying? That's surviving true. every day to day. You're out here within, so. you know, you're 10 miles from Chipotle everywhere you are in the U.S. <laughs> right. That's out true. there, you know, I, w- I would say respect. For me, I, I'm a lot more respectful. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. always mature and whatnot, but mm-hmm. I'm just respectful of people, of culture, of religion, of everything. I try to just a bigger viewpoint. Yeah. Because, you know, I was driving, a, I was in a third world country, two different ones for seven weeks. Mm-hmm. And so in Bali and Thailand, yeah, I'd see these people, like 70 year old guys, no shirt on, pants rolled up, no shoes, I can assume knee deep in this like muddy water in a rice field at five in the morning with a hoe just like going to work making probably three dollars a day max it's crazy yeah, I would right? say res- respects people's households their their yeah. cultures even if you're making 50 a hundred thousand thirty thousand you know as long as you enjoy life um you're helping other people you know you have quality of life you have your health man i think you know definitely uh, makes you more humble and grateful man because when you go to other countries dude you see how people live, man. It's just, it's just a different perspective, man. Like ever since I, you know, only had like a thousand dollars in my bank, and I was like starting to travel, I still go for the lower accommodations. Like my price point hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. So like, That's if, smart, if I'm traveling, like I'm still in the same hotel. Like I've stayed recently in the same hotel that I was when I was broke. It was the same thing. And I didn't care. Okay. Like I still think it's the same amount of money, even though I make more than that cap for me hasn't mm-hmm. raised. You know, eventually once that's you smart, keep going, it'll yeah. start, it'll go up, it'll yeah. be more diluted. Yeah. But that's just me. Because I always said, at the amount of money I'm making now, I thought I'd have a McLaren, a Lamborghini, a Range Rover, a Ferrari, a house, All those? a house in Laguna, and be flying first class. I told myself that when I was 13. At 70K a month, that was my number. I was like, that's all I need. Dude, that's, that's, that's quite a bit, man, that you're trying to do. It's kind of funny. Well, I did all the financing numbers. I was like, all right, I can do it. You worked it out? Okay. So cool, man, big things for these guys right here. Right. right. Big thanks. We appreciate it. Mm. <laughs> Jay. All right. Woo!